theorem, definition, axiom, formula. There are many different concepts in mathematics, and a lot of people struggle to distinguish what each of them actually means. What is a theorem? What is a formula? What is a definition? What is an axiom? Is an axiom the same thing as a definition? Is a formula the same thing as a theorem? What is a property? In this video, I'll show you the dictionary of mathematics. I'll explain each of these concepts and give examples of what they mean. So let's get straight to it. If we could divide mathematics into four parts, those parts would be primitive concepts, definitions, axioms, and theorems. All of mathematics fits here. Any statement in mathematics can be classified under one of these four categories. So let's understand what each one means. What is a primitive concept? A primitive concept is a mathematical object that has no definition. Examples of primitive concepts, point, line, plane, and set. All these objects have no definition. We simply accept that they exist and don't give definitions to them. They just need to satisfy the axioms or postulates that I'll talk about later. No matter how much you try to define what a point, line, or plane is, these objects have no definition. Why don't they have definitions? Because when trying to create a definition for them, you never reach a satisfactory definition, and later I'll tell you what makes a good definition in mathematics. For example, you could try to define a line as the set of all points that are arranged in a straight line. However, you use the word line to define what a line is, and that's not valid. So the way mathematics works requires us to have primitive concepts that are mathematical objects without definition. They are our starting points. We simply accept that they exist, that they satisfy axioms, and we move forward to then be able to prove theorems. Definition. Since these mathematical objects have no definition, let's understand what a definition is. A definition is the act of naming mathematical objects. It's the act of creating a mathematical object. For example, what's the definition of a triangle? It's as follows. Given three non-collinear points, we call a triangle the union of the three segments that connect these points and have them as endpoints. Notice that this definition creates the mathematical object triangle. Before this definition, the mathematical object triangle doesn't exist. It only comes to exist after the definition. So the definition is precisely the act of creation, the birth certificate of a mathematical object. This definition can be simply of a mathematical object or of the relationship between two objects. For example, the definition of numbers being relatively prime. Number A and number B are relatively prime. When the GCD between A and B equals 1, note that the relationship being relatively prime arises precisely after the definition. Observations about good definitions. A good definition must be clear and succinct. It's not good for a definition to be very long and full of roundabout ideas. It should be clear and direct to the point. Don't use object A to define object B, and use object B to define object A, thus creating a vicious circle. When you use object A to define B and use B to define A, that's not valid. It's not a good definition. You don't prove definitions. Definitions are simply defined, and we accept them. Axioms. An axiom or postulate is a mathematical sentence that is simply accepted without demonstration. It's something so obvious that we simply accept it, and it's not necessary to prove such a statement. Let's see some examples of postulates or axioms. A unique line can be drawn through any two points. Euclid's fifth axiom. Through a point outside a line, a unique line parallel to the given line can be drawn. Theorems. Now let's get to the famous theorems. A theorem is a mathematical sentence obtained through demonstration. So from the moment you have primitive concepts, definitions, and axioms, you can elaborate theorems, which are sentences you obtain through demonstration, that is, through logical deduction. Examples of theorems. The set of prime numbers is infinite. The Pythagorean theorem, possibly the most famous theorem in mathematics. It says that triangle ABC is a right triangle if and only if the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares of the legs. What does this if and only if mean? It means that both directions are valid. That is, if a triangle is a right triangle, then the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares of the legs. But the reverse also holds. If the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares of the legs, then this triangle is a right triangle. It would be like saying, I am from Minas Gerais if and only if I was born in Minas Gerais. That is, if I'm from Minas Gerais, then I was born in Minas Gerais. But the reverse also holds. If I was born in Minas Gerais, then I'm from Minas Gerais. In other words, saying I'm from Minas Gerais and saying I was born in Minas Gerais are equivalent things. Both directions are valid. Within mathematics, we use the expression if and only if to exemplify this idea. The well-known quadratic formula. It says that the roots of the equation, a times x squared plus b times x plus c, is equal to zero, are given by this formula. Every formula is a theorem, because it's a result obtained through deduction and mathematical demonstration. Every theorem must be proven. If a theorem has no demonstration, then it's not a theorem, 
and it must be a formal demonstration using logic and tuition doesn't count. Properties of exponentiation. Every property is a theorem. For exponentiation, the following properties are valid. Here are some of them I didn't list all. All these properties have demonstrations. That is, you can prove each one of them. So why do we give it a different name? Why do we call it a property instead of a theorem? A property is a specific type of theorem. It's something that follows almost immediately from the definition. That is, you just need to apply the definition and a little logical reasoning to reach this conclusion, to reach this theorem. So we don't call it a theorem, we call it a property. Reserving the name theorem for more relevant conclusions that are more difficult to find through demonstration. Lemma. A lemma can also be called an auxiliary theorem. It's a result used to demonstrate a theorem. That is, when you're performing some demonstration and need a previous result from another. Theorem. That other theorem is called a lemma. Corollary. A corollary is a result that follows immediately and directly from a theorem. For example, in a right triangle, the sum of the two acute angles equals 90 degree. Why is this true? We know from a fundamental theorem that the sum of interior angles in any triangle equals 180 degree. In a right triangle, which already contains one 90 degree angle, the remaining two angles must sum to 90 degree. When you add 90 plus 90, you get the 180 degree from our original theorem. Law. A law describes a constant relationship between elements that can vary. Consider the law of sines as a perfect example. In any triangle, if you take any side and divide it by the sine of its opposite angle, this ratio will always equal twice the radius of the triangle's circumscribed circle. We have elements that vary sides, change, angles change, even the radius changes. But this relationship remains perfectly constant. That consistency defines a mathematical law.